Oh crap. Camera. 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 <laughs> Which camera? I'm on the wrong camera. Sitting camera. This is crap. Cool. All right. I think that's it, you guys. Let's see. Do, do, yeah, I think that's the one we want. Do, do, do. I am out of botanical garden, you guys. I just going to walk around. I don't know if anybody wants to ask questions about mushrooms. I don't know. I don't really have much of a plan. i just happy that the phone thing is working. I don't know about the orientation. I suppose I could turn it this way. I don't know what that's going to do. I don't know. That was better. I'm on my camera now, and I don't have my laptop with me, so... I don't really have the ability to check what the fuck's going on, and it could be upside down for all I know. <laughs> and now... I don't know what the hell happened, you guys. I think I'm back in there, right? Now the camera's back. <laughs> this is this is definitely not my forte. Let me try to change the... So I went to change the camera, and then I got somehow... I know y'all don't want to hear this fucking shit. I know when people do these streams, and they give me... They give you, like, detailed shit about their technical problems. I know you don't want to fucking hear it. You don't care. You just want to hear about fucking mushrooms or whatever. Anyway, I think that's it. Now, if I see this problem, you got a back button and a close button. And I think it's the close button you use. Not, I think I accidentally hit the back button. Okay, anywho, uh, you guys, I don't know. I'd like to get it sideways. I'm sure you would, too. That makes it easier to read the question, too. Anyway, if you guys ever know, this is... Uh, that says toy home toy home is uh basically they call it by toy it's uh it's pandanus if you've ever cooked or you've had the, any dessert that was like greenish might think like oh they chopped up some fucking leaves and put it in here and made it green that's exactly what they did um they it's a it's a big tree it's a it's a relative of the screw pine i don't know you guys can read all that shit in pie um, I just know the genus name Pandanus. It's it's what we call, if you've ever been to like some kind of coastal communities, you'll have what they call screw pines. Uh, because the way, I don't know if you can look down there at the at the stem, it like basically the, the it kind of, I guess it screws. I don't know what the hell. You like it kind of rotates as it grows up. You can't really see it on that one. I don't know. That might be another plant. Anyway, it smells good. So that's where uh, toy means extra. Bye, bye means leaf, but they didn't. So toy, home, home means smells good. So they put it in shit like, um, I don't know, like fucking desserts and shit like that. It smells to me like Cool Ranch Doritos. It's very, very strange, but it actually just like, every time you can see, and this is like a whole fucking field of it up here. I've never done this walking around shit, you guys. So this is going to be a new one. I'm trying to figure out if I should validate, like I'm just holding this basically on a a tripod kind of thing now. Um, like I don't, I wouldn't call it a selfie stick. It's more like a miniature tripod. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out if, 
if do I if I'm gonna do this, do I really maybe I should buy a they call it a gimbal. A gimbal costs about 150 bucks, I think it is. I don't know, five thousand baht. That's like yeah, fuck. I don't know the exchange rate now is all fucked up. Forty, yeah, I don't know, 130, 140 bucks, something like that. Anyway, uh, I'll probably like give you guys nausea and make you sick. So sorry. So along with like fucked up sound, technical issues, difficulties, and then you'll probably get nauseous from watching the fucking video. So I'm um, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm in a botanical park here that I don't really plan on doing any fucking videos about plants, but not yet at least. I don't know what the fuck that one is. Peltoforum pterocarpin. That's a... What does that say in Thai? One, three. Three. I can read Thai pretty well, but when it's a word I don't recognize, sometimes the vowels, it's kind of like English. If you saw like an E-I-O, you know, if you said the word like pleiotropy in like English, you'd be like, how the fuck do I spell or pronounce that? This again, don't know. Fucking trees. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is a great. This is gonna be a great nature video, eh? Well, like, yeah. I don't know this fucking tree. This is some other fucking tree. I don't know. He's a fucking bean. <laughs> There's lots of trees here that are in the leguminaceae. They have um beans. You know, they're basically beans. And I know this one, and I did. I knew I shouldn't have done that. It's got this like sticky resin shit in it. Now I've got resin all over my fingers. This comes from a plant and the Fabaceae. They used to call it the Leguminaceae, but see, there's a family. You can always recognize the family name of any kind of uh, plant or mushroom when it ends in A-C-E. That's a reference to the family. So Fab is like Fab, I don't know, like um, beans. There's a, a genus of, uh, I think it's Faba, Faba. I think it's so we get like you've heard of like fava beans, fava, fava. It probably that fava beans, fava is probably from the original Latin, which is the usually, if not always, um, it was a genus name. So probably fabus or something like that or fabonia or something. And that becomes the type genus for the family name. So that anytime you see that, you know, that's a family. It doesn't matter plants or mushrooms. And then when you see that, that's usually the, what we call the type genus of that family. So, yeah, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't want to scare people with all that fucking Latin nomenclatural shit. We'll get freaked out pretty quick when you start throwing around Latin words. Hey, well, let's just go for a walk in the park. It is song on here, and I'm trying to basically hide from the rest of the world. They opened up this botanical park because, I don't know, no, maybe they're maybe they need people. People usually come here and then they like give donations and shit. You know, so, uh, here's a very very exotic. This is what's called pile of dog shit. <laughs> so we got like a little clong over uh, a canal over there. I saw a huge fucking water monitor when we we're coming in. It was like a four foot long water monitor, and I reckon before my battery's up uh this we will see another one these giant fucking i guess they're called komodo dragons but i'm not really sure because there's different like subspecies or whatever and i'm not sure the ones here would technically be called komodo dragons but they're like these huge fucking monitor lizards i guess komodo would be probably from the the island the japanese island of Komo komono komodo huh. i don't know so these wouldn't, these would just be big fucking monitor lizards. But I've heard people call different things monitor lizards too. Like there's different species that get very different sizes than these fucking things here, man, because there's no predators and shit. They eat like rats and other small birds and animals. They get fucking huge, man. They're like, shit, I've seen them like almost probably seven, eight foot long. They like fucking, they look like alligators, man. They're crazy. And they, they don't fuck with you, and they're usually afraid of you. You can get, like, probably, I've never got more than about 10, 5 or 10 foot close to them. I wouldn't fuck with them. <laughs> they're the kind of thing that, like, if they bite you, their saliva is so full of bacteria and nasty shit, like, you're very likely to get an infection. 
<clears throat> like they're not going to rip a piece of your leg off or anything, but your leg will get infected and then it will fall off. And then they generally come back their prey. They usually attack shit like water buffalo and deer and shit. And then they just let them die. And then they come back and eat the carrion, you know, the, the rotten carcass like later. So I don't want to be one of those fucking things. Let's see. I hope this sounds all right. I should probably check the comments. Find me live show morning eight. I was gonna go. Hi, you guys. Hi, Michael. I'm gonna say hi. Jesus, this was funny. It's a nature park, but there's a dude driving a motorcycle in there, you know. Like really. <laughs> Hell yeah, find me live show. Lunar players, what's up? Morning app's gonna lay down. It's gotta work. Do -do -do. Video look good, Ed. Okay, cool. Yeah, the jumpy video, you guys. I don't know. And also the phone. I, I noticed this the other day when I made a video. The phone, it looks jumpy to me. But when it actually goes through the phone and the algorithm, it, it smooths it out. So it might look quite good. I don't know. Um, I don't know. The pixel quality and all that shit. You know, the internet. Blah, 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 blah. Do, do, do. What's up, Baron? How are you guys doing? PXN eMedica. I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? It's funny, e medica. When you say e here, when you put e in front of something, it, it's like a very bad connotation. Like it means like, oh, this fucking thing. You know, if you're like, oh, you say, oh, look at this car. Like, and then it's kind of, you put e in front of it. It's like, oh, look at this fucking car. You know, you're like, oh, look at that girl. And you say, oh, look at that fucking girl. You know, like, like, kind of like calling her a whore. <laughs> is like a very like yeah you'll, you'll learn that if you ever come here be careful about putting ease in front of things it, it might upset some people <laughs> uh isn't that the e but the way the pronunciation of what would look like an e it's a it's a kind of like local dialect that yeah throw that in there it makes makes things negative connotations Let's see if we can find some little plants. They got everything quite well labeled here, but unfortunately they got all the descriptions and shit in Thai. Um, I know a lot about plants, but you guys, when you get to the tropic, tropics, it, like I know that's the euphorbiaceae. So euphorbs are things like black locusts and sh um, I, think, I think, no, no, black locusts is in the bean family. Shit, now I'm getting confused. It's been a while since I studied plants. Um, euphorbs are um, like, so they look like cacti, but it, it's weird. They usually have latex. Oh, I know latex rubber. Yeah. So latex, um, the thing we get like, you know, condoms and rubber gloves from. Um, that's the uh, euphorbia ACE. That's a family that usually has plants that produce latex. Some of them get like big old trees and some are just like little tiny plants. Some are like house kind of plants that get little flowers and shit on them. Um, yeah, there's a like ton of them it's like another one of the plant families i believe also poinsettia so if you ever ripped open a poinsettia at christmas they've always got this like latex in them they're a member of the euphorb ace family um i think the other common one is uh yeah latex rubber which yeah which we harvest for latex if you guys don't know rubber comes from trees Here's another legume, and here's another motorcycle. It's kind of funny when you walk around and, like, I don't know. <laughs> do, do maybe if you were in, I don't reckon you'd ever see, like, motorcycles driving through, like, you know, a park in the U.S., but maybe you would. I don't know. I haven't been back for 20 years. <laughs> But, you know, here's just kind of a practical thing. It's like, you know, that dude working over there check at some gate, you know, fuck, he needs to go get his lunch or whatever. This looks a bit like a mushroom. What the fuck? Oh, my gosh, you guys, this is fucking fortuitous. I never, ever, ever would have expected this here. This is Calvatia cyathiformis. God damn. It's the middle of the dry season, you guys. Oh, it did rain last week. Wow. Okay. Bonus, man. I like never, ever, ever would have expected. I got to make sure because I want to get in trouble for picking a mushroom because this is like a, this is a, it's like a public area, you know, it's like a little botanical. So, you notice here it grows in the grass. There's a little tree. This is not like a mycorrhizal mushroom or anything. So, you know, so I was like over here and I was just like, what is that white thing? 
So when they're white, see how you can just barely see in the grass, um, like white puffy things in the grass that you either, it's either going to be garbage or, um, sometimes a condom. Like I've been on mushroom rocks before where you're like picking shit off the ground. You're like, Oh, that looks weird. You know, it's not natural. Like it's obviously not part of the natural debris and you're like, Oh, and then it's like a, something like a condom. So be careful. Um, that is a mushroom. That is Cyathus. Uh, what color? The puffball. So it, it used to be, it was like a Perdon for a while, and that was Calvatia. And I think it's now in Cyathus. I don't fucking know, though. It really depends on who you ask and what the recent DNA sequences that were published. Um, you know, people publish new DNA sequences and they change their trees. And this happens like literally almost, it's like every few months. So every time you see a new, um, I'm reading the questions here. Uh, LOL netted. What does that mean? PXN, that means you're noted. Oh, noted. Oh, I, oh, because I was talking about the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't being a dick or anything. I was just saying, I just was looking for something to talk about. Too. <laughs> uh, maybe a little, a little topical from UK. I miss you, Thailand. Yeah. Thailand has got the water festival going on now. Songkran. It's it's funny. Um, it's like really fun if you're drunk and wasted and you're walking around with a squirt gun. If you're trying to go somewhere, it's kind of like tedious. Like there's no taxis. Everybody went home. The taxis that are all around, they seem like they got a pissy attitude because they're. It's kind of like you know those people who have to like work on Christmas Day. They're all fucking pissy, and they're like, nah, 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 you know. And it's like, dude, I'm sorry, man. You don't have to work. You know, like, like, I'm not forcing you to work. I'm not forcing you to drive me somewhere. Don't be such a fucking asshole about it, you know? Like, they'll give you, like, when you, like, pay them, like, say, say you got to pay, like, 80 baht or something, and you give them, like, 100 and want some change, and they'll look at you like you're a fucking madman. Like, what do you mean you want change? Like, they just want, oh, God, now I got bugs crawling all over me. See, this is why I don't like nature. No. <laughs> anyway, let me pick this thing. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not, um, it's not endangered or anything. I know, um, so I guess I'm going to like, kind of like not read the questions. It's really hard. I'm outside and it's quite sunny out. Um, I might, I might read it, might read, try to read some of them, but my eyes, I just woke up like an hour ago too. <laughs> and my, I still got like sleep in my eyes. So anyway, you can see why they call this Cyathiformis. Cyathus, if you don't know, um, a craniformis. Uh, I believe it's either it. What there's two species names. One is craniformis, and the other is cyathiformis. So craniformis, look, it looks like a brain, like cy uh, craniformis, like cranium, right? Do, 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 do. That looks like a cranium. Um, and so what happens is this basically is quite hard. I'll just. Rip, I'm not going to rip the whole thing. I'll just rip part of it. You see how it's white inside. This would be a good edible, to be honest. What you do when you eat it, you peel off that kind of like, uh, I think they call it a peridium. So this part right there, that's the part you eat. You can eat that too, but it's just kind of nasty. It's like stale potato chips. Um, so what will happen is this little, they call it the, uh, what is it? Cl um, oof, I don't know. This is a bunch of hypomat gleba. They call that the gleba. So that white stuff inside, man, there's a bunch of bugs here that are biting me, guys. I'm going to, bye-bye. This, so this is Cyathus craniformis. <laughs> it's a puffball. You could eat it and you would just rip it off. It's probably about as big as it's going to get. I can tell. You can usually tell. It's quite firm and uh, that would be good to eat now, but I don't want to carry it. And I don't really, puffballs are, they're good, but they're not that good. And I don't want to get busted for fucking, you know, stealing some shit from the botanical gardens. So anyway, that was Calvatia craniformis, the skull, something, a skull, puffball, shit like that. Right, morel hunting, yeah, good luck, man. It's kind of funny, morels, morels and morel spots. Sorry, I'm going to hold this up, you guys, so <laughs> get like a POV, FPV, I don't know, first person view, point of view. There's not really much to see here. It's just a bunch of trees. This is a big ass music hall. God damn, now the bugs are fucking following me. Really? 
Um, I'm starting to sweat and the bugs and these little like, I don't know, and they're not like these little flies. Once they get your scent, man, fucking on you. Anywho, oh, that looks like what might be an old Ganoderma. <laughs> God damn, now I got bugs going up my fucking nose. Yeah, that is probably either an old Ganoderma or is she right down there? That is an old Ganoderma lucidum or uh, might be a Felinus. And that is probably, I'm not going to rip it out, but that's probably a Daldinia. <laughs> uh, a Dedalia or another genus that's closely related to Daliopsis. I don't know if you can see there. Let me, I will rip it out because this was kind of cool. When you're doing polypores, oh no, it's not. So look. So when you're doing pff, damn bugs in my face now and my eyes, ooh, if you can see there the pores on the bottom, you really, really have to look and you see, god damn, those bugs are literally like landing on my eyeballs. Um, pff, you got to look at the pores. See this is when you're in the tropics, man. You guys this is why. Like, I, I don't like cold weather, but also it's like, man, when you get to the tropics, the bugs and the shit you got to deal with gets a little bit over annoying sometimes. Um, anyway, that was the Daliopsis. Maybe since I ripped it out, I can just pick it up. Um, if you look at the bottom, the pore surface is very, very important. So the pore surface on these, these polypore things... Some of them will just be like basically like little tiny holes. Some will be slightly larger holes. And if you can, I don't know how well you can see there, uh, but there's basically like this kind of maze. Like <laughs> There's like this little maze going on on the bottom there. Um, so there's an old uh, Dedalia as a reference to some old Greek god or some shit. Uh, and it was uh, basically they, they, she created some maze. I don't know. It's some Greek mythology story. Most of these Latin names come from some Greek or Roman mythology shit. You know, something about a god or myth or lion or something. <laughs> Anywho, it's a sweet potato. Patata. Ipomia. Ipomia is, at least it used to be the genus. So this is Montet. Montet means basically mon means any kind of root tuberish vegetable and tet means like foreign. So this, as you know, Ipomia is a genus of plants from South America. So it's quite funny because there's two um, Ipomia um, also over there in the distance. I don't know. You can see there's another Ipomia, Ipomia um, called uh, Morning Glory. Morning Glory, they eat here. So water Morning Glory, there's again many, many species of Ipomias and in that that family again remember we see the family here it's the convolvulaceae good luck saying that the convolvulaceae right so that is the family we know it's the family because that that suffix ace and so you have to assume that that's the genus and remember so the genus is always with a capital letter species epithet small letter l stands for Linnaeus and lamb is for Lamarck. So Lamarck was a very famous biologist. So was Linnaeus. But Linnaeus got there first. So Linnaeus gets the L period. <laughs> you know, these are like kind of like like P. Diddy. You know, that's obviously is not his fucking name, but that's what he wants to be called. So he'll probably be P or Diddy or whatever. Anyway, Linnaeus got there first. So Linnaeus is the father of modern, basically, taxonomy, binomial not taxonomy. So Linnaeus gets an L period. Everybody knows. Who knows? That's Linnaeus. That's Lamarck. Lamarck is another guy who did a lot of plants in the in the tropics. And so that's it. So this is the family, genus, species, what we call the authority. And then there's some other words you don't need to know. But this is basically the guy who first published it. So Linnaeus would have published it probably in the genus Convolvulus. And then Lamarck switched it to Ipomia. So you get the original guy who came up with the species epithet, which is Patatus. And then you get the second guy who switched it to this new genus. So that's why. And if you wanted to be really, really specific, you put like a date there and even a publication. These days we have to put a date and a publication because there's so many publications. And you might even have to put like a DOI number, which is uh, something, uh, I don't know, direct object 
identifier or something like that. It's a, the thing on the internet. It's like a URL on the internet. So, oh man, Jesus, they got all of this shit labeled. Hibiscus, here's another interesting one, a big old hibiscus. And hibiscus in the U.S. are little tiny, what we call mallows. <laughs> it's a giant fucking tree. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's Thailand, man. Like, so something that you might grow as like an annual or something that might just grow like, you know, for a couple months in your garden and make a couple flowers and die. Here, it's a whole fucking tree. <laughs> so, I don't know which this one is. This is, I'll have to read it in. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, the tele. So, this is a beach hibiscus. This is the one, if I remember correctly, it gets yellow flowers. So they look like normal yellow um, hibiscus flowers, you know, like you put in your tea. Um, and um, but no flowers now. If uh, I, I used it grows on the beach quite often, it's quite kind of neat. It gets these um, pretty flowers, and I believe it. If I can remember correctly, it's some kind of weird seed pods, but I'm not really remembering right now. I've been to the beach for a while. Sweetenia, I don't know that one. Do, 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 do. Here's another one. Crispia, I don't know. Another. Oh, so they've done it. Aye, right, that's cool. They've they've arranged things. So that's another Malvaceae. Mal the mallow um plant is uh so if you guys know Philanthus, you guys know Philanthus, that plant that gets in the fucking cracks of all the um uh, of all the like uh you know empty parking lots and shit. You know, if you look at the back of the 7-Eleven parking lot, up and up against the wall, there'll be some philanthus trees. Um, so, again, uh, a tree that's in the wrong place at the wrong time usually becomes what we call invasive. So here, not really invasive, but if it was in a 7-Eleven in a parking lot in Michigan, probably not where it should be. You can see my little phone holder thing is slowly slowly unscrewing itself <laughs> uh, i don't want to drop my phone do, 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 do. let's see here there are huge ones here how did they get uh, i'm not sure luna and baby are she talking about water monitors or what what you're talking about do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm trying to run away, you guys. Since I nailed down the goddamn uh, bug, fly, whatever thing is like fucking following me. He got a scent of my human stench. And he's like trying to go up my nose. Do, 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 there are here. He went here. Do, do. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. Sorry, I don't know, Luna, what you're talking about. Do, do, I'm probably going to have to go like stand in the sun to get rid of these bugs. <laughs> When making a transfer from agar agar, I drop the cut on new plate and it bounced around a bit and a week later there are two cuts. So, yeah, they don't mix. That's an interesting PPP. Um, this is a kind of an interesting thing. I don't know why the same exact, I've noticed the same thing many, many, many times. Uh, this is when you start to question like all of our assumptions about mating compatibilities and intersterility groups and monocarions and dicarions because you we will often hear uh it refer like people will be like well to make sure that your culture is a monoculture put it put three transfers on the same plate and see if they merge together and if it's a monoculture they should all merge together that is just not true like i don't know who came up with that but i don't think they were very experienced in growing mushrooms because that rarely happens. <laughs> if you, like you have, have noticed, pew, 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 if you have accidentally dropped a piece on a plate and you end up getting two inoculation points on a new plate, they will frequently, when, they, when those two colonies grow out and hit each other, they will make a barrage zone. And this, you would think, is, is not normal, right? You would think that the same you know, compatible dicarion or monocarion or whatever would just fucking merge together. That's not the case. Uh, in fact, it's the opposite. Like most of the time when you see multiple inoculation points, you're going to get like these kind of weird, like little spots, you know, little like zones on the plate. 
And you're like, why the fuck is it doing that? Because this should be the same genetics. I don't have an answer for you. I'm sorry, pew, pew, pew. Um, I have noticed it many, many times throughout the years, and I've never heard it adequately addressed. My guess would be that it's some sort of kind of um, almost just like a protective mechanism. You know, it's like kind of like when you hit on a girl, like you're going to probably like get a negative reaction, right? Like it doesn't mean you can't mate with her. It just means like she doesn't want you to touch her. <laughs> So if you've got like two dicarions and they come together on a plate, even if they're the same exact dicarion, you know, it would be the same situation if you met like your twin in real life. You know, if you didn't know a person was your twin, even though they were genetically identical to you, it doesn't mean you're going to run up and embrace them and give them a big hug. You know, you're going to be like, oh, this is a separate individual. So even though they're the same genetic, um, genetic composition and like they're still according to that fungus and kind of the rules of nature it's a new individual so there's probably at least at the beginning some kind of uh you know getting to know each other um and, and i don't know to be honest when i've seen like cultures grow together when that has happened and it happens quite often you you drop a, a culture it bounces and then you end up with this plate it looks like it's got it's like it looks like a damn multi-spore plate you know if you if you have a transfer piece and it bounces around. Maybe you drop it on the floor and you get like five or six new inoculation points. It, it, the thing ends up looking like a fucking multi-sport culture, you know, and you're just like, what the hell is this? I, this was a monoculture. Why does it look so weird? Well, again, I don't know. I, I think at some point when those genes, those epigenetic factors, those individual, you know, that like when it's inoculated, that fungus has now become like its own individual. And again, even with humans, you know, you'd be genetically identical clones or whatever. I'm sure plants do the same thing. Um, and then you're um, you're just basically, I guess I'm literally trying to smash bugs on my arm as I'm walking around. Man, this is why I remember why I stay in the fucking air conditioner. Fuck all this nature shit. <laughs> you know, nature in like winter in like september in the michigan woods or tennessee like you know in november it's like different kind of nature nature in the tropics is like a fucking bitch like everything wants to eat you and kill you and bite you so yeah i know exactly what you mean uh there pew 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 but um and the next explanation uh, again i would guess it's just those individuals, those once those things have become inoculation points, they are now considered to be individuals uh, and they are going to interact with each other thusly, you know, like they are going to treat each other like individual fungi. Uh, so it's not I don't I don't think it's like a purely genetic thing. It's just simple fact that they are literally just now two individuals. I don't know. It's it's like a little disconcerting. I know. I, again, I've been through this many, many times. It's disconcerting, man. Because you're like, I, you see the references. And this is how, again, I think you guys, you know, people that in the past, they, they make these assertions and they're just like, yeah, like this will happen if you put your three pieces on a plate and they should grow together. And it's like, I have never seen that really happen. What the fuck are you talking about? Like if I put three pieces of my monoculture on a new plate, like when they grow together, there is like interfaces. They're not interacting. Man, when I put two monos on a plate and they mate, and I know they made it because I see clamps, it looks like shit. There's like a barrage zone, you know, it looks like fucking World War III there. And they're like not apparently agreeing with each other. But when you grow them out, it makes new fruit and it makes it, you look under the microscope and there's clamps and shit. And you're just like, wow, that looked like shit. Believe me, I went through this because I did, I literally checked thousands and thousands of plates for clamps when I was doing my PhD because I was looking for mating systems, whether things were bipolar or tetrapolar. And this procedure, this experiment took months and it also took thousands of plates. Um, and so I'm very familiar with this problem, believe me. And I know the frustration um, if you're just a home grower of cubes and you're like, why the fuck are my two mono not mating or not acting right? Or like, you're like, why is my dicarion not fusing with the other same dicarion? Like it gets confusing and you'll just be like, what the fuck is going on? 
Believe me, I'm very, very, very familiar with all of these problems, and I don't have any answers for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so there's the official answer from Ed, PhD, fucking mycologist with 30 years of experience. Do, 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 do. Man, I need to get out and get back my house everywhere. Dude, dude. Yeah, that's it's kind of funny this time of the year. The like people that the interest in mushrooms and whatnot like explodes, and then people forget about them basically until the fall again. <laughs> I understand. I mean, in June and July, most of the U.S., you know, you're looking for little things that aren't really edible, and they're not really like super exciting, you know. They're just like little ground mushrooms or maybe some saprobic stuff. Um, you know, so I understand. But it's a good time, to be honest, if you're bored in June and July, it's a good time to really hit the books. Like if you really want to learn about fungi, you know, go out and find those little LBMs, those little brown mushrooms. And then when you find those mushrooms in fall that you don't know what they, what they are, you'll be like, oh, I saw this thing in the book last month when I was bored out of my mind. Do, 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 do. For tissue samples, mushrooms in the field, can I use straight? Uh, Michael, if you were doing tissue samples in the field, um, I wouldn't do them in the field. I would just bring them back to the lab. Unless you are very, very far off in the jungle somewhere. Um, there's no reason to do tissue samples in the field. You would do them back in the lab. So you would take that mushroom. Like if I wanted to clone that mushroom, that cyathus that we just saw, I would just simply put it in my pocket and take it back to a proper lab. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't attempt to do any cloning or tissue preparations in the field. Like the field, it's kind of weird when you first start, you get like really excited and you think like, oh yeah, obviously you want fresh samples. Um, it's like practically it, like di very, very difficult. It, you don't want to carry shit in the field. The field is almost exclusively for you collecting things, trying to get them back to a lab and then do your thing with them. Like nobody really, like the only thing you would want to do in the field maybe is start a spore print. Like if you have a tackle box, oh, here's a cool big old feather. I was thinking about making a quill pen the other day. <laughs> But again, I don't, ah, the bugs get me already. Jesus, step off the path and the fucking bugs are on me already. Um, yeah, I don't want to be seen picking shit up in here. This is like a university, like botanical gardens. So I don't know. They might have special rules about you collecting shit. Uh, anywho, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. the. Uh, oh, yeah. So basically you're waiting to get back to a lab. Like there is no like tissue culture preparation sampling, whatever in the, in the field. It's not like we're dealing with like a stingray or a shark or like, you know, a fucking elk. Like you're not going to release the mushroom into the wild after you're done. So you just rip the mushroom out and you take it back to the lab. Like you don't need to worry about like that puff ball. If I were to rip out that whole thing and take it back to the lab, like probably tomorrow or at least next month, there's going to be more puff balls there, you know? I'm not going to like, it's not like if you're like sampling DNA from a fucking blue whale, you don't obviously want to kill the blue whale to get a fucking DNA sample. Um, but like with a mushroom, you know, like a little bit different story. So yeah, I would just um, go back, take it, just literally take it back to the lab. So yes, yeah, so why that's why I'm a little confused to 3% hydrogen peroxide. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about because nobody does that. I'm get, I'm guessing you're 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 a cannabis person and you're talking about maybe doing genotyping with cannabis and you want a tissue sample to go back to extract DNA or something from or maybe get a tissue culture. Um yeah, just take the whole thing home. Like nobody um nobody's gonna bring their tissue culture kit to the, the forest. Um let me look at me like I'm I'm literally I've just got a camera in my hand and I'm being like attacked by bugs. Um, when I was like up north in the jungle, like leeches, if you start getting down, like I, like I did, 
if you get down like this with a camera and you're kneeling on the ground, like the amount that we have leeches here. So you get down, you get your camera down there and then you realize like, wow, there's like leeches crawling uh, as a little squirrel over there. Way, way, way over there. You realize like, wow, I have like little leeches crawling all over my body. And then it kind of freaks you out and you're like, oh, I want to get the fuck out of here. Let me go home. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, there's like the issues to deal with in the tropics, also sterility, obviously. Um, the only thing you might want to do, like if you were, if you found a stipitate, like a, a capped mushroom, you know, um, and you want to, you want to get a spore print, you can basically start the spore print in the field. Again, I mean, if, you know, you're probably going to be out in the field for maybe two or three hours, you know, if, if you're out longer than that. Like what you will do is generally you collect your fungi and then you get back to your car or whatever. And then you start working on your spore prints and stuff like that. I'm not sure where I'm going. Um, if you're, if you can't wait two hours, then it's, you know, it's probably not that time sensitive. Like I remember I used to, um, I used to like start making spore prints. Like as soon as I found a mushroom, you, you cut like a little hole in a piece of paper and you, you know, kind of, it's kind of like a glory hole, you know, make a little glory hole and you put your little cap there and then you put it. So the paper's like directly on the bottom of the gills and like people see you doing this and they're looking at you like, why the fuck are you doing that? Because it is weird because you generally don't need to do it unless you're going to be out in the woods and that's really, really fucking hot. And it's like, you know, more than three hours in the woods. You can usually wait till you get home. Um, so like to, uh, to basically to to figure out these spore prints sorry guys there's somebody coming i don't want to i'm a little bit afraid i don't want to put like other people on these fucking videos because people get weird it's it is some girl so should I, I could do like those other guys who with their videos and like you know perv on girls like <laughs> yeah i'll go like hide in the bushes <laughs> oh like hide in the bushes <laughs> now like i might get in trouble <laughs> wow my sick fucking mind goes weird places really quick doesn't it i go from like talking about mushrooms and fucking mushroom taxonomy and microscopy to fucking pervert on girls you sick fuck i don't really know where the fuck this thing i've been in this gardens only like twice and i don't really know I, we used to come here to get high <laughs> it's funny this exact place before they made it like official and shit we used to just come back here it was just basically like there was like a parking lot and a couple like trails and we used to just come back here to get high i fell in a fucking pond back here i don't know where that pond is now but i was really fucking high and a little bit drunk one night and i ended up falling in this goddamn pond and then yeah that was funny it was funny it was kind of annoying because it was like four in the morning and i was high as fuck and could barely walk because i was drunk but um yeah this place has memories but they wouldn't let you do that shit now you know the man has fucking Put a fence around it, put all these nice walking trails and shit, lights, fucking security guards, all that shit. <laughs> all that fucking shit. I think I'm kind of going back to the same place I was just at. Yeah, it's not too, it's not, this is only probably about two or three acres of land here, so it's kind of hard to get lost, especially considering I can like hear the highway, which is like probably about. Probably about 500 yards like that way <laughs> like that way like i can hear cars over there so it's a little bit hard to get lost because i i know and i see the sun is over there which is north from where i'm at well it's actually west what am i talking about northwest i guess so back to the tunnel let's see I, i'm having trouble too i can't really read the questions very well on my phone and the sun i need some fucking water too do 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 morning y'all cool you guys seems like there's different people different people here I guess it's like three, it's like, it's like four in the afternoon here at four 30 or something like that. It's probably, so it's like 4 AM for most of y'all. 
Thank you for taking the time to answer your question if they want to mix on the plate, but the plate's about more. Yeah, pew pew. I don't know, man. If you understand it, it's like if you figure it out, man, that would be cool because yeah, I've wondered the same thing, even when you're mixing, like you said, when you mix things in the bag and they seem to all merge together. Like if you check, so if you check um like under the scope, you'll see at those weird barrage zones, they look like they're kind of fighting, but they will form clamps. And you're like, wow. And it's strange, like you can't, this is why I, I'd say it, but I always encourage people to get a microscope. Like you can look macromorphologically at a contact zone, at a multi-spore plate, at a monocarion, a dicarion, whatever. And sometimes it does not match what you think it should be. Like you're looking at a, like I have several fucking, this is annoying. I have an albino riptide. I have an MMTP at home. And I was looking at the plates like literally last week. And I was like, these look like shit. I'm going to throw them away. I think they're contaminant. I fucking went to take a piss today and I looked at the fucking plates as I'm going to the bathroom and they both have fucking huge mushrooms growing off them. So I'm like, oh my God, like these plates I was going to fucking throw away literally like two days ago now have giant fucking mushrooms growing on them. And I'm like, well, I'm really glad I didn't throw those away because I don't know what, <laughs> well, it would have been stupid, right? So, do, 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 I'm going to go home and probably subculture those things. And probably when I get them on different media, they will probably look entirely different. <laughs> like the local flora and fauna, Homo sapiens. This is Homo sapien erectus, common caveman. <laughs> I don't even know what are we anymore. Are we Homo sapiens still? I don't know, my friend was telling me some shit about some other new species, Desnovians or something that they've been finding. But I don't know, he's a, like he's like a political science guy, so he probably don't know shit about hominid evolution. But, oh, they got like a little lake in here. Fuck, I need to know this. <laughs> oh, that's cool. This is probably the fucking lake I fell in like fucking 15 years ago. I've lived in this little town. Oh, here's some cycads. Cool. Um, I've lived in this little town for like fucking 20 years. So that says Pongpa, Psychis Siamiformis, yeah, uh, Sianomensis. Siam is the old word for uh, Thailand. So anything that was like found or named in Thailand was, um, it's called Siam, Siamensis. So that's a psychad. You guys all know psychads, right? Speaking of dinosaurs and hominid evolution, I see you got any questions here. Do, do, do. Yes, on YouTube rare. Um, don't know. Do, 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 right? I can't wait for the fall and siren. Get out there. Do, do. Oh, so I have a plate of PE Melmax. Uh, that keeps on throwing little sign. I'm not really sure exactly what you're talking about, Brandon. I don't know what little thought you sometimes you guys use terminology that I'm I'm not familiar with your local like you know your like northwest terminology or whatever. I have to really um like guess sometimes what y'all are talking about. Taking them off and cutting them on. I, I don't know. Cutting, you mean cloning them on plates? Yeah, Brandon, I, I'm sorry. I'm not really quite understanding what you're saying there. Are you talking about cloning? Sure. Do, 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 do. Uh, this is technically we're in the Compatome province. Do, 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 do. Uh, we're outside the city, so we're basically about 20, 20 clicks west of Bangkok. Bangkok. Bangkok, I, I don't even know, to be honest, if Bangkok like, is an actual province. 
Um, I don't, I don't know. It's funny because like everybody just calls it Bangkok, but it's one of those things. Like when you say like New York City, like what do you mean like New York? Like if somebody just says, "Oh, I'm from New York," you're like, "Is that New York State? New York City? Are you from Brooklyn? You from Queens? You from what? Where are you from in New York?" You know, it's one of those things. And here, I don't know. Do, 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 do. I don't know how that. Let's go check out the lake. <laughs> Man, this is big. I didn't. This is how observant I live. I live like two kilometers away from this fucking place, and I just literally have never been here. Um, I think it's mostly because they charge you money. They char they didn't charge you for a while when they first opened and then they charged like basically started charging two bucks, which is fine, but it like just kind of pissed me off because I was a fucking employee here for a while and it's like motherfuckers. Like you can't be charging me to fucking come visit this place. So I stopped coming. And I don't even know what that shit is over there. Do, 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 do. Kind of cool. Ooh. I don't know. I guess I'm not used to doing these little walk around video things. There's a guy who does this shit in the Philippines. It's funny. He just like wander, wanders around and gets up in people's face. There's a bunch of guys that do that kind of shit. The guys who walk around like Pati and basically like slam a camera up in some fucking prostitute's face and like, oh, what's it like fucking white guys? You know, shit like that. It's like, oh, that's a bit rude. Um, but then there's other people who do the nature thing. And then there's people that do the, like there's a guy who walks on the Philippines and he just talks to literally just random fucking people, like homeless people, fucking old ladies selling noodles, fucking like two year old girls on bicycles. And he's just like all over the place. So he's got one of those like sticks that like, like if he's walking right now, it's like, I guess it's called a gimbal. I think it's called the gimbal. And uh, yeah, he, like he's spinning it around. It's like, rear, rear, you know, it's like doing all this kind of shit. And I was like, I saw one of those at the shop and I was like, yeah, I need a new toy. But now I'm like, eh, maybe not. This thing I got it on now costs like four bucks, I think. <laughs> oh my God, now I got a rock. Fucking bitching about the insects. You'd be like, why the fuck does Ed live there? He bitches a lot. Now, now I actually do have a, some fucking seeds. Goddamn nature. Fucking seeds in my foot. So you're trying to, that's, they're trying to escape. They're like, well, take us home with you. So I got socks on, which is probably a stupid idea. And now I got like seeds all over my fucking socks. Good job, nature. Transport those seeds. There's the native fucking ducks. Oh, no, wait, those are cement. Ha! Uh, I knew they were cement. I was joking. Just joking. See, I see shit like this, and I'm like, man, I want to go fishing. It's different fish here and different techniques. The water here is really, really warm. Like, so that that kind of, like, changes the species of fish that grow, and it also changes the techniques. Like a lot of fishing here doesn't really involve like you might think like, oh, I throw a fucking spinner over there, you know, or maybe a little popper. Maybe I'll go over here. There might probably like a bass sitting up on there under that, uh, whatever that plant is. I forgot. Uh, but no, th those, those kind of fish, like we're thinking, you're thinking North American species of fish, you know, whatever. They don't really, it's different here, different species of fish different techniques a lot of the fishing here involves like throwing something out and like waiting it'd be like catfishing you know like in the u.s or like fishing for for something that's like you kind of wait for it to come eat your bait <laughs> you know it's not it's not like it's not like a, they're not aggressive i mean they obviously have some aggressive species of fish here the snakehead fishes i think um what they call them they're really quite aggressive but they're not the kind of thing, like if I had my fly rod with me and I was in the U.S., man, I'd fucking put a fly right up under there, you know, like right where that fucking pylon is. Like I'd fucking throw a fucking little bat, you know, a little deer hair popper right up under there and probably pull a fucking bass out of there. 
Um, but yeah, this ain't North America and this ain't Michigan. So, you know, you see, watch, I'll drop my fucking camera in the phone, but you can see there how it's, um, it's also different structure, right? Like this is basically like, look, it's like kind of just sand, right? So this, this lake, it's not again, like Michigan, I don't know, depending on where you're at, like, this is basically a hole in the ground. So you can tell by the way that like, see how the, the grass is kind of just like, it's, it's not really like an aquatic environment. Like, look, they're purposely trying to grow cattails in the middle. Like it's different here in the tropics. Right. And like, for instance, like you would never see that plant growing on the water side, you know, of a lake, like anywhere in America. Like it's artificial, all this shit's artificial, which is kind of, kind of a little bit sad and, and, but it's also, it's, it's okay, you know, but no, it's like, whatever, it still looks pretty. But you know, when you're in a, in an urban environment and you've got, you know, you got nice, look, this is a dock. This fucking dock is really, really nice. We've got life vests and shit, you know? Um, but yeah, you know, it's what it is. Can't really complain about it too much. You, at least they got a cool place to walk and I didn't get charged today. <laughs> they actually made you sign in with your phone when you came in. And I think it's because they don't want like kids getting lost. <laughs> like if you're, it's not that big, but you know, if it was closing time, they want to make sure everybody's out. They also want to make sure like potheads like me don't come here and stay until fucking midnight. You know, be like, hey, let's go in with our backpacks and take a bottle of whiskey with us and fucking 20 joints. And hey, like, we'll sit on that. You know, they got cameras everywhere now. But, you know, that's what we would have done 20 years ago. The little dove. Doves here are remarkably not afraid of people. Like, you know, they don't they don't really fly. They just kind of walk away. Weird. Maybe they're so acclimated to people. Okay, here's another one that crashulaceae. So if you're if you're a botanist, if you've ever heard of CAM, uh, so we have basically in botany we have three types of photosynthesis: <laughs> C3, C4, and Crassulian acid metabolism, or CAM. If you want to look in a botany book, um, if you really, really, really want to get into photosynthesis and how efficient like um, photons are used, etc. You can look up C3, C4. In fact, one of the big pushes for the agricultural kind of <laughs> complex, as it, you know, <clears throat> is to turn plants that are uh, C3 into C4 plants and maybe even mess around a little bit with that camp photosynthesis. So these are kind of weird plants that like you can see there. Here in the tropics, they actually get flowers. <laughs> like, so you probably have a plant similar to this, maybe like growing in your house. Um, here they grow like outside and they get flowers <laughs> has to do with the light, you know, the light period. And this is, oh, this is lemongrass. This is, um, if I, yep, this is what they call takrai. This is lemongrass. It literally just grows like a fucking weed here. Like they just plant it as an ornamental grass and it, um, yeah, just grows outside. It smells good. It's supposed to keep away the bugs, but. I just saw a big, huge swarm of bugs over there. <laughs> There's more. This is probably more of a sedum. It's kind of related to that crashula over there. Another, another kind of, what do they call them? Um, oh, they got a name for them. They're called moisture. Ah, what is it? They're like sticky. They're plump, full of water. What the hell do they call them? you got any questions they got a name for those kind of things so they're like plump and full of water there's like a name like aloe and sedums and shit crashulas there's a name for them can't remember what it is though succulents succulents thank god that was gonna drive me nuts succulents why i live in thailand besides the beauty of the tropics is cheaper liver um there's like a lot of reasons to live here michael um you probably probably might be one of your first if you've ever seen any of my other live streams i can go on for hours and hours and hours about why to live in thailand um just go look on a video about like why you might want to retire in thailand there'll be like a thousand guys There'll be like a thousand young guys, a thousand old guys, like a thousand dudes and a few girls. There's some older women too that come here. 
there are older white women that come to, um, you know, retire in the tropics. Kind of like people go to Costa Rica, Belize. You know, they used to go like shit like the Bahamas and shit, but those places are way too expensive. So basically you can get like a tropical paradise like Thailand for like a tenth of the price of like living in like Bahamas or even like Florida or San Francisco. Like you can live here. No shit. If you I, this is not shit, I'm not writing a fucking budget video or anything. But if you live here like on two thousand U.S. dollars a month, like you live like no fucking problem unless you have like severe medical conditions that require fucking heart surgery or liver transplants, like a normal, healthy person on two thousand, like a normal, say, 40 year old or 50 year old. Oh, you can retire here when you're 52. Um, the one thing here is visas like you have to have money in the bank, but it's like twenty seven thousand dollars. So in order to make sure that you don't end up being a homeless fucking bum here, they want you to have twenty seven thousand dollars. It's like a mil. It's like almost a million baht, which is sounds like a lot. It's not. That's like a car. Right. So if you got that in the bank, it's like insurance. It's like a deposit. Right. When you come here on the airplane and you're like, hey, man, I want to hang out here and like fuck around and do dangerous shit and drive motorcycles and fucking not get vaccinated and blah, blah, blah. And like, here is my deposit. Like if I fuck up and I get sick or I have a motorcycle accident, here's my deposit to make sure I don't become a burden on the fucking Thai medical system. Cause you're not a citizen, right? If you fuck yourself up here, they want to make sure that you have money to get your ass back to your own fucking country. <laughs> right. And strange as it is, that seems like a big, big ass for a lot of people. In fact, I know a guy recently. I knew him. I wouldn't say he was my friend. I just knew him. He literally he got deported because he overstayed here and he didn't have money for a six hundred dollar plane ticket to get back to Europe. Like, I don't know over here, man, you get some real shit bags. You literally you get some real fucking dirt bags. I hate to say it, but there's some fucking shitholes that live over here in Asia. So anyway. You can retire at 50, um, 800,000 baht, which is, yeah, I, I said a million. It's actually 800,000, which is about $27,000, depending on the exchange rate. And uh, yeah, you can fucking live out the rest of your life over here, you know, be a fucking e nomad or whatever the fuck they're called now. You know, do your online business, be a day trader, or whatever, shit like that. You know, people got all kinds of ways of making money now. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 uh, yeah, you're right, Elena. I think there was a few shit. So I'm not really a super big flower person anymore. There's so many here. Like even, even these, like this is some kind of, I believe this is some kind of mint here. It looks, it looks like a sedum or something, but I'm, I'm guessing it's a part of the Lamy ACE because the way the, the, see the leaves. So on the Lamy AC, the mint family, the leaves generally go boop, boop, and they alternate 90 degrees. Now it's got really thick, succulent leaves, and but I can smell. It smells kind of minty. And you can see here, they're suggesting that you smell it. <laughs> and what it is, I don't know. There's a tag here written in Thai. I don't think I can read that. I can read Thai signs pretty well, but not them. Um, I can't read like handwritten Thai very well. You know, it's like kind of like reading cursive. This is another plant. I think they're suggesting you smell. No, oh, it smells like a plant. <laughs> this I believe is a lemony thing. I think there's Artemisia. Yeah, I, I know this one. Yeah, like weren't, um, if you kind of like a dill-ish almost, it's in that same kind of family, the Asteraceae. There's so many of those fucking asters. So the aster ACE is people, this is like a sunflower family or the aster family. People call these DYCs, uh, damn yellow composites, because a lot of the flowers like chamomile and fucking all that shit, daisies, fucking black eyed Susans, all that shit like this. No, that, not that. Um, that, that's another one. They look like fucking sunflowers <laughs> or asters. Uh, you growing a little mushroom and like some weird mutations. Yeah, Brandon, without photos or whatever, no idea what's going on. 
Do, 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 cloning. Yeah. So yeah, we clone. I mean, this is the thing, like when you get, I mean, what you're calling mutations or what other people generally call mutations, they might not be mutations. Like if you've got just a plate that's maybe an adverse, you know, environmental conditions, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe they're not quite, maybe a mutation is not exactly the right word. You guys all know this one, so aloe. Tectana, this is what's called a teak tree. This is the famous one. Sock. So people, Thai people call it sock. Um, ton sock. So again, see, notice we're back to Linnaeus. So F is, I don't know what the F stands for, but I've never seen that to be honest. Uh, but yeah, let's just put probably a air. Um, Tectona, yeah, this is a teak tree. And this is, of course, you know, aloe. Aloe vera. It's a bunch of aloes. They got huge uh, barbadensis and a lot of other subspecies of aloes and shit that will grow all over the world. Um, so yeah, so yeah, cloning Brandon. Yeah, you can clone things. You can just keep cloning. It, there's a certain point at which you'll get to where like you're like, I don't know if I want to use another plate to like clone um this thing. Like maybe I should like, you know, not waste another plate. But I don't know. I'm going to start heading back to the front. I got to meet my friend here, guys. This one's going to be a short one. I just wanted to kind of give out the that fucking book just went in my mouth. Damn it. <laughs> Plus, I really, really need some water. Plus, it's hot as fuck here, and I'm not going to go back here. I, that's, I think I got to go back this way. Do, 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 do. Uh, sorry, guys. This wasn't meant to be like a tour or anything. It's just like a place to walk. Like I said, they're outside playing with water like all over the place and I'm kind of trying to avoid it. Cam plants are the best. Um, yeah, maybe <laughs> I'm more, of, I'm more of a C4 kind of guy myself. Uh, yeah, Michael, I don't particularly have any videos about Thailand because it's saturated. There will be like if you just do once it gets in your algorithm, like you're going to see more and more and more and more videos. So I'm warning you now, like you will get like if you type like living in Thailand, you're going to get inundated with just like video after video after video after video. Like you probably have to start doing that, like not interested. My microphone just popped off, you guys. Like you'll probably have to start doing that not interested, not interested thing beside the video because they push it a lot because, you know, a lot of people come here for um, R&R, you know, recreation, man. People come over here, drop thousands and thousands of dollars on their vacation. But, you know, when you're talking thousands of dollars, like you can literally have a fat, huge fucking vacation here for, you know, a month, like in a really, really nice resort for like three or four thousand dollars. May and eh, maybe four thousand, five thousand, but if you throw in girls and booze and fucking gambling and drugs and all that shit, I'm gonna cut through this fucking thing here. I'm sorry about that. Um, if you throw in a bunch of shit, you know, if you got a fucking three gram a day coke habit and you want to fuck, you know, a different girl every night, that's gonna fucking significantly affect your budget. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> You know, but if you're just chilling at the beach and like, well, you know, drinking fucking cokes, like, yeah, that's all good, man. You can you can rock. Oh, there's a fish. That's actually a snakehead fish, man. I wish I could zoom. I don't know if I can. Oh, do I dare fucking try to zoom? There is a snakehead fish. Damn. Now, so speaking of fly fishing, if I threw a fly right there, that's plot on. So, man, see, that's probably why it's in here, though. Like somebody would have caught it. Like that kind of fish would hit a fly. That is a very, very aggressive fish that has actually become invasive in parts of the eastern U.S. It's called a snakehead fish. That would hit a fly. Like you know, a bass, like a deer hair bass popper, that fish would fucking nail that thing. But I don't think the security guard up here would be too keen on me bringing my fucking seven weight fly rod up in here. Um, <laughs> so we saw one mushroom at least. <laughs> that one mushroom lemongrass. Need to see a water monitor. 
I saw one right before I was coming in. It wasn't that big though. It was only it was maybe two or three foot long. It was not an impressive one. I got my other microphone fucking bouncing around in my pocket. Probably bashed the hell out of it. This A V equipment ain't cheap either, man. That's the other thing. I start fucking with this stuff. It's like, wow. This A V stuff isn't cheap. Do, 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 right? My cousin built a dream home there and opened a liquor store with his wife there. Cheap, cheap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Huh. Yeah, you guys out in the Northwest, you got all the. Uh, it's changing here too, man, because like they, they legalized weed last year and like they had like, they did the whole dispensary, like green rush thing for a little while. Um, now they're going back to medical. And, I mean, it's Thailand. You can literally get any fucking thing you want here. Uh, like literally anything you want. It's just a matter of like, do you want to talk to those people who are going to provide you with that shit? You know, you start asking people for various exotic shit and then you're going to get, you know, it's a different crowd of people, you know, it's cool though. Most it's all safe and everything, you know, it's just, you just hang out with the old white dudes and fucking, you know, watch them stumble around drunk at three in the morning. But, uh, but yeah, you start messing around with like different exotic shit and then you're dealing with exotic people and exotic places at exotic times of the night. And, you know, same shit. <laughs> You're buying fucking crack at somebody at three in the morning. That lends itself to a certain group of people you may or may not want to be hanging around with. Oh, man, I can see the big old amphitheater building. What is that thing called? Like a hall? I think I got way fucked up. I'm like... I'm way, way, way at the back of the garden and I need to get to the front. I'm a little bit afraid they're going to close. They said they were going to close in like an hour and a half, I think. So, like, I need to make my fucking way back up to the front. <laughs> uh, they'll be calling me on my phone, sir. Can you please exit the botanical gardens? Oh, I see some people over there. Okay. Fuck this. I'm going to cut through the little fucking thing here because I don't know what the trail go, where that trail goes. I just know I need to go that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a little off-roading here. <laughs> and I still might not be. Sheffleria. You guys know Sheffleria? Sheffleria. That's the plant that's in Sheffleria. That's the plant that's in like every fucking hotel lobby. You've probably seen this iconic leaf in like every fucking hotel lobby in every hotel all over the world. <laughs> Schefflera, I think. Schefflera. There's fucking UFO remnants. They're here, man. They're here. Funny people now, they'll be like, oh, man, you know, you know, aliens are real. You know, I'm like, yeah, they, they, they sell me this like they're trying to convince me. I'm like, yeah, no shit, dumbass. <laughs> they're like they're selling. They're trying to sell me a fucking used car or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, they like they I'm like, yeah, of course they exist. You fucking moron. I've studied math. I know about statistics and probability. <laughs> If you've ever bought a lottery ticket, you should believe that aliens exist because you believe that you can possibly fucking win the lottery. Even the odds are fucking billions to one or trillions to one. You still think you can fucking win. Now, if you believe that you can win the lottery, you need to believe that aliens exist because the odds are just the fucking like probably way better. <laughs> Like I would put money, like a lot of money on the fact that aliens exist, but I don't play the lottery because it's a fucking waste of money. This is a plant called Clitoria, you guys. I don't know how well you can see. See that? Look familiar, guys? Maybe this way? <laughs> this way? Depends on which way you were. 
Ah, uh, that's a plant called Clitoria butterfly pea. The genus name Clitoria is an obvious reference to the shape of female genitalia. And believe it or not, I actually got in trouble in one of my classes for pointing that out. <laughs> You got to be a little careful here. And strangely enough, I, I got in trouble because an, uh, another American It's funny, like another American, an American pointed it out that I had made it some kind of sexual reference in a class because I pointed out that the Latin root for Clitoria, the genus of that plant and human anatomy were the same. And uh, that fucking bitch turned me in. He was like, Ed made a sexual, it's like, where the fuck are you from utah what, what where the fuck do you come i don't know man you get some weird fucking white people here too man well speaking of northwest right you guys got a whole assortment of like i know people that have lived in the northwest i'm sure they're great people out there but there's a fucking packs of weirdos too yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. I'm sure not trying to insult anybody who lives out there. I'm just saying, you know, like if you hear weird shit, usually it's something like blah, 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 this weird shit. It's usually something that's happening like west of the Mississippi. <laughs> the people in the east are sort of normal, you know, especially Michigan folks. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Hey, do, 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 do. Uh, why she did that too? It opened up for us to grow. I think. So. Yeah, I saw that legal shit, right, Brandon? It's just similar here. You know, I think it, it, here it was more of like a profit. I don't know. I don't think the government here is pretty pro pro weed. It's just like who's. It's the same problem. Who's going to get the tax money? How are they going to cut it up? And, here it's not really like a safety issue you know people have used cannabis here for fucking millennia like really without much of a big deal it's just one of those things like yeah you open up a dispensary in the middle of fucking Times square and you got a monopoly on it like you know who's gonna get that money true 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 hey ed what is your best experience with this ed what in your experience is the best mix for core and verm um declaying it makes probably very little difference to be honest the the main thing is your spawn and how good your spawn is um although that being said just last night you have to experiment i, I say it makes little difference you will get fruit now optimizing those fruit for size and and pin set and you know harvest time etc that's like a whole art form and i'm still trying to figure it out i've Grown literally like thousands of mono tubs and bags and shoe boxes, and whatnot, fucking food trays, and I'm still figuring it out. Depends on your quar, your vermiculite source, your like how did you boil it? Did you do bucket tech? Did you sterilize it? Did you pasteurize it? Did you add azomite? Did you add gypsum? Did you let it sit for a day before you squeezed it? Did you not let it sit for a day? on and on and on and on and on it's like one of those things like i've got this small homo sapien child how do i raise it right like i don't know <laughs> it's a long process there's many variables hey 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 okay Oh shit. Oh, there we go. Back. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I'm coming. I don't know where the fucking, I don't see any big buildings anymore. I'm lost. Where the fuck am I? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, I know where I'm at. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, so I might have shut this down, you guys. I'm meeting somebody up here that I don't think really wants to be on a fucking magic mushroom YouTube episode. So um, let me see here what's going on. Do, 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 do. So yeah, I declaim, you'll just have to figure it out. Sorry, there's no uh, Clitoria, yes. Holy shit, there is four S years I've been looking for it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I still haven't. That Clitoria is all over the place here. You just, sometimes it's expensive. 
<laughs> I mean, what? God damn it. Now I'm getting fucking stabbed by sticks. Jesus Christ. Nature wants to fuck kill me. Uh, I did not see he, he, he very much there. But seriously, we're going to bust down the door. So. Yeah, I don't think anybody's really worried about getting busted for growing cubes anymore. They do occasionally here bust somebody, but it's usually related to some other like weapons charges or fucking meth. You know, they don't really care that much about the mushrooms. They care. It's the same as the U.S., man. The dudes that get into the opiates and the meth. And then you're, you're dealing with, I mean, you guys know, you're drug people, right? You know, those people are bad. People like generally that do meth and shit. I mean, I've fucking done it. I know people have done it. It's like, but yeah, you know where that goes. We all know where that goes. It's not a big fucking surprise. Drugs that keep you up for two, three, four days at a time. And make you want to do more drugs and fucking fuck and get more money for more drugs. Like, not good. Like, there's a certain time when the party is supposed to be over, right? <laughs> and speaking of that, I am at the entrance, but I don't see who I'm supposed to meet. They might have left me already. Bing bong, bing bong. Hey, okay, guys, I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good time. I hope you enjoyed the walk. See y'all later. Thanks for joining. Thanks for questions. Bye-bye.